Next Sunday, Pentecost, red will be the, the uh, color, and we just uh, look forward to continuing our Lord's message to each and every one of us. And we, uh, we pray that our lives will be richly blessed on the praise of our Lord and Savior, strengthen us for the life that lies ahead of us. Open our hearts to hear and through your word to each draw near. Let each your word ever pure remain and retain. Let us your children and heirs remain. Your word inspires our hearts within. Your word grants healing from our sins. Your word has power I bless your word brings peace and happiness. <coughs> oh God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above. That your word may not be bubbled, but have free course and be preached in our service and taught in the Bible study following the service to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people. That in steadfast faith we may serve you of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Easter season culminates in the high priestly prayer of Jesus. He prays for us, for our faith, for our unity, for our mission, our mission of faith to the world that he's given us just before he ascended into heaven. With ascension just behind us, this prayer reminds us that Christ continues to address us and to speak on our behalf before the Father. He prays for our unity, for our endurance, for our faithfulness. We pray that these things, we pray for these things every Sunday. May His work, His work is not complete in us. His work is not complete in us, and He is still at work in us and through us as we proclaim that word to those that we love and to those without Christ. Shall we rise?
saving water from our baptism. Keep us as your faithful people whom you have chosen and set apart for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, as your holy
Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of Him. This is the Word of God.
What do you do if you are expecting to be gone for a few days or maybe you have an extended time from your home and loved ones? Many of us have some watch over the place. The detailed instructions, some of us know this very well. We tell the babysitter what to do. We do not want our children or our pets, for that matter, to starve or to be tried to sleep. But we leave copious instructions. It's a sign that we care about our property and, and family. Look at the gospel for today. It shows us how much Jesus cares for us. Right before his betrayal and death, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father. He was praying for the dear children entrusted to him, for you and for me. And this prayer often called, is often called Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's actually a demonstration of what Jesus is up to all the time since. It had to stop in praying for us and advocating for us. It's actually Jesus praying for us the night before his crucifixion. You know, it teaches us, because he had a lot on his mind, it teaches us that our Savior is praying for us even now. As we listen to this word, even now, every moment. This is actually quite amazing, isn't it? Quite amazing. Something sometimes we forget about it. When Christ was praying to his Father in our text, it was the last days of what we call his state of humiliation. You know, the years Jesus did his saving work on earth when he voluntarily chose not only to fully to use his divine attributes, his powers as God, he set them aside. And this has resounding implications if you think about when he's hanging on the cross and these people remind him, come on down if you are God. He chose not to use that divine power. But he did not, but he did use those attributes when he contributed to saving us. Omniscience. Omniscience is one of Jesus' divine attributes. He knows everything. And on this night, in this night in our sermon, in, in the text, Jesus is using his omniscience to know that this very night he was going to be betrayed. And the next day, died the excruciating death on the cross, the, the death of a criminal. And knowing that, what was Jesus, where did Jesus place his concern? Not on himself.
The Almighty Christ could have protected his children simply by taking them out of this world. But he didn't choose to do that. He didn't do it. Instead, he prayed for them. I do not ask, Father, that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Isn't that be interesting? Prayer is the better protection. Huh? Even in our lives, prayer is a better protection. The prayer of Christ is shown as his high priestly prayer because it reflects Jesus' role as our priest. And the job of a priest in the Old Testament was to be intercessor for the people since, well, since people were sinful and needed someone to represent them to poor God. The earthly priest, the earthly high priest, were sinful as well, but God anointed them for his purposes. And the human high priest experienced the wages of their own sin, which was physical death. As you know that our ultimate high priest, Jesus, perfect, Sinless. He didn't deserve to die, but for our sake he chose to die for, because he loves us so much. He chose to die the death of a common criminal. The death that we have deserved. That was a sacrifice that our high priest offered with his, his prayer to the Father. Because of that sacrifice offered by God's own beloved Son, the Heavenly Father listens to Jesus' prayer. So, did the Father respond to our Savior's prayer to protect his children? What do you think? Yes! You just look very shallow into your life and you can see where your protection lies. Jesus became the answer to his own prayer. First, God's wrath towards sinners was satisfied by our Savior on the cross. They were forgiven. And secondly, his resurrection defeated the ultimate enemy of death. Death could no longer bully God's children, and it dares to bully us now. Die, you and I might die physically, but protected by God. Protected by the Almighty God. What about Satan and his minions? Christ's victory vanquished them. They know that they lost the war against God. Yet the prince of this world still goes on. He'll do his best to harass God's elect. God the Father dispatched the Holy Spirit to be with the children of God as they struggle in this world. And the third person of the Holy Trinity that we confessed a few moments ago, the third person of the Trinity is strengthening the faith of Christians, preserving their lives in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. The children of God not only have the Holy Spirit in their hearts, but they have fellow believers for mutual consolation. That's why our praying Savior asked his Father for unity among his children. The devil will destroy, try to destroy the church by schisms and factions among Christians. The fact is, even hell cannot overcome the church. But the true unity of the Christian church can only be created by God himself. Only by God himself. True unity is a divine act. You see, we're not talking about artificial and superficial unity. We're talking about true concord. True concord. We all know about the name Concordia. But what does Concordia mean? Hearts, it means from or with heart. The hearts of believers are truly united in faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, our Savior not only prayed for us, but He continues to pray for us. He continues.
continues even now. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, imploring his Father to protect and unify us and keep us unified. The Apostle John, who recorded this prayer of Jesus, also wrote in his first epistle, We have present, we have an advocate with the Father. We have an advocate with Father Jesus Christ the righteous. And that word have is in the present tense. Jesus' prayer in our text is ongoing. It's still, Jesus is still praying for us. Still being our advocate. And being almighty and omniscient, all-knowing and almighty. He knows exactly what we need and he will provide it. And Jesus' prayer is being answered even now. And not just our lives, not just the disciples' lives, but also in our lives. Christ not only forgave us, he continues to forgive us and love us. Christ not only protected the disciples, but he is protecting us also. Jesus not only bound the first Christians together in the unity of faith, he still unites and binds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ, albeit we're sinful. We have our inconsistent, we have our sins, yes. With all of we trust in Christ Jesus, our praying Savior will never, ever abandon us. Just before he ascended into heaven, he said, even unto the ends of the world. He's with us. I'll be with you always. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper, His body and blood are there so we can taste Him and be strengthened. And when we face difficulty on the side of eternity, we remember that our home is in heaven. We're but strangers here. And our praying Savior is also our coming Savior. He's coming again. All and who will keep his promise by coming back to us to be with him in eternal peace. And knowing that may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus.
your son to be tempted in every way, like us. Guard our hearts against temptation. Keep us in the day of trouble and rescue us from the pit of despair. Use us to reach out to the poor and the needy with the love of Christ and the resources of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. And our Savior bore the wounds of people sick, sin and death. Help us to trust in you in every need of healing for our bodies and for our hearts. Hear us as we pray on behalf of the sick, the suffering, the grieving, and the dying. We look to you, O oh Lord, for our second, our church secretary's mother, father. Dan, uh, Dan Chambers, to Zoe Stover, brother's daughter, to Gail French, to David Benzant, friend of Glenn Carnes, the family of Siebert Clark, Shirley Griffin's 50 year old nephew. And Lord, we also look to you on behalf of those, those third and fourth graders at Guardian School. Our prayers are requested. And Bill Swister. I think you remain safe and be in your hands at all times. Lord, and especially we pray for those that are on our hearts and minds at this present moment.
suffered and died and rose for our salvation, you have exalted him to the highest majesty at your right hand, that he might graciously fill all things. Grant us faithfully to eat and drink this holy supper, trusting our bringing Savior Jesus, who though unseen in his ascended glory, is here present to save by his body and blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed for prayer, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you.